here we are, back in it. Conversations. Uh, you just spoke. Did you get a haircut? I did get a haircut. Yeah, I thought yeah, I did something yeah, yeah. Drew Thank got you. a haircut. I appreciate Drew it. Drew got a haircut. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't have a little coffee cup or something here uh, promoting your stylist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. It's not David Jax, is it? No, it no, isn't. No, 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 I go in Fullerton. Yeah. 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 Kind of weighs out, but I, he's I, pretty good. I, I'm lucky I, David Jax owns... He used to be, well, I don't know if he owned it, but he was part of the loft in Glendora. Oh, now uh, he works over in San Dimas, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I think he, he, he he's, part, first of all, he's an artist. I mean, he's one of those guys who've oh, been doing yeah. it all for a long time. But, yeah, haircut, tricky, uh-huh. tricky. Yeah, yeah, haircuts are tricky. And speaking of people who do haircuts when you grow up, moms. Mom, mom okay. cut my hair with a ball. <laughs> yeah. uh, and she had one of these little, um, Thinners, which yeah, I would yeah, yeah. <laughs> really maybe that's <laughs> yeah, what happened. Yeah. <laughs> she used to run this thinner and then pull your hair, but it would thin it out. Oh, it hurt! And then, yeah, so you put the bowl chop around right, and then right. thin it out. Yeah, so you had the old bowl cut. Oh, you should you you weren't <laughs> around. You should have been around when the when the perm craze. Oh, everybody was getting yeah, the curly hair, man. Uh, you get the perm going. <laughs> Crazy funny. stuff. Yeah. Um. Well, speaking of that, yeah, moms, abuse, mom, abuse. Moms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. No, you spoke a great message, uh, uh, special message uh, for Mother's Day. Uh, speaking about moms, and yeah, I think right away, like. What do you notice the difference between moms now and moms 20 years ago? Yeah, like, yeah. what are the trends? Yeah. You know, culture is always uh, evolving, no doubt yeah. about that. Mm. Uh, the way we raise our children evolves, the way we look at uh, our parents. Mm. The, the, the big difference I see, and I'm not sure it's a good one, uh-huh. but the big difference I see between now and then is there's kind of the expectation, 60s, 70s, 80s, even probably early 90s, the expectation wasn't so much that mom be perfect, you know? Yeah. Uh, now it seems like every counseling, every everything you go to always traces everything back to mother. Of course, that's mm. been going on a long time. I, I guess Freud, actually. You could have <laughs> gone all the way back to Freud. Your problem was with your mother. Every man secretly wants to kill his father and yeah. sleep with his mother. That was Freud's <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think it's changed in the sense that there was, there was definitely a lot more grace and mercy for motherhood mm. uh, back then. Yeah. In the sense that you know the the, the awesome responsibility of motherhood, and it, it was kind of understood that mothers and fathers and sons and daughters were all flawed, and we're trying to make the best of this and yeah. and to give each other a lot of grace and mercy. With the, with the advent of so many people doing counseling now, and it's mm-hmm. not a bad thing at all, unless right, you become right. addicted to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the advent of that means that mothers are being scrutinized more than they ever have been, and that's a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, because that means that. You know, there, there's no perfect mom. There's mm-hmm. not. Now, mm-hmm. th- there are abusive moms, just like there are abusive dads and siblings. Yeah. But I'm not so sure everything that we throw into that category should be placed in that category. Mm-hmm. And you are going to have mothers that are influenced greatly by by their mothers. Yeah. yeah. It's like the quote I said, I, you know, I, my, I opened my mouth and my mother came out. It's amazing <laughs> how much you end up disciplining yeah. like your mother, you end up being like your mother, even especially the things you don't want to be. Yeah. But if you look back, and I looked at the things that of my the flaws of my own mother. And yes, there are things I don't want to do that she was like, but they weren't destructive things. They were just irritable things that <laughs> irritated me. Like my mother would come in singing in the morning. That's the way she woke us up. But oh man, I was so mad. Right, right. I'd rather somebody just hit me over the head with a shovel, you know, and wake me up. <laughs> She'd come in singing all nice. And I'm not a I wasn't a morning person, so I just pull the covers off my head and say, Shut up, you know, <laughs> stop it. You're irritating. No. Uh my mother definitely was uh, um, insecure because mm-hmm. of the relationship she had with her parents. Yeah. So my mother was definitely overprotective. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother, uh, you know, her parents, basically she grew up in a house very poor, mm-hmm. didn't have any money to be, do anything extra. So didn't go on trips, didn't see the country, didn't see the world. And matter of fact, my mother was terrified of water, hmm. afraid of drowning. Wow. Now, Whatever, and she passed that on to us. She wouldn't let us get anywhere near a pool or no anything. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't learn to swim until I was 17. Dang. Yeah. And fi- because I d- started dating a girl who owned uh-huh. a pool. And there was no way I was going to tell that girl I didn't, I didn't Correct. swim. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so my dad took me out one day and said, okay, son, the best way to do is just jump in. Yeah. I said, no way. I'm not jumping <laughs> in the water. So any any fears, any problems, any hangups that your parents have, they're going to be passed on to you. Right. Now, the question is, are they so bad 
that they're evil or are they just hangups and habits we have that just part and partial to life? And 90% of the time, that's all they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I can look back, oh, mom, you punished me because I didn't, you know, you you scarred me forever because I didn't get in water until I was 17. Yeah, you know, so, and and their parenting habits are going to be a lot like their parenting habits. And you, you, a lot of parenting habits aren't morally right or wrong. Mm. Now, I will say that a lot of parenting habits can be non-productive. Uh, yeah. But that's different, but they're not, they don't fit into the category of morality. Let me give you a good example. So, uh, a, a, an, a, an ineffective way of parenting a, a strong-willed child. Mm. Okay. So, let's say every time you ask your two-year-old to do something, he gets down in the floor and squirms and yells and screams. Yeah. Okay, you're probably not going to be productive by ignoring that. Right. Or by giving the child what he wants every time he does that. Uh, you you think you're giving him freedom. No, you're creating a habit. Uh-huh. But again, we're not talking about moral issues. If the mother decides, I'm going to do that, it's not immoral. Mm. It's just going to be ineffective. Yeah. Let's say bedtime. We go back to uh, parenting again. We're getting yeah. a little bit in parent. Let's go yeah. bedtime. Bedtime. So you, you know, my uh, Robin was great with Delaney and Sion. This was bedtime. Yeah. Let's say you put your kids to bed and they stand in there and scream, and they don't want to go to bed. Yeah. And you go in and you every time they scream, you go in and get them, bring them into the room. Well, you're well. well it's not immoral to do that, right? It's probably not very wise because if I want to get what I want and I know if I scream I get it, I'm probably going to scream. Right. It's it's that whole thing about this is the way, mm. this is the way it goes. Yeah. And it, if you if you approach child raising by a Christian worldview, knowing that the child, mm. I know it's hard for parents to hear, but your son's heart is wicked in every way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people, parents hate to hear that. Yeah. But yeah. the fact of the matter is, if you understand the Christian worldview, is your child does not have a bent toward doing the right thing. Now, mm. some children are incredibly compliant. Delaney, yeah. my son, uh-huh. just tell him what to do and he does it because he's so black and white. Yeah. But he's still sneaky. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. A matter of fact, I just learned recently and it devastated me. He said, Dad, you know what we did? When you and Mom went to bed, we, we would sneak out the garage and go down to the service station and buy candy. <laughs> I was absolutely <laughs> devastated. What? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Years and, later, you hear about oh, that. Oh, my yeah. goodness. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, you know. So what I'm saying is, when it comes to your mother, I think you need to stop and ask some questions. Mm. Your mother's, some of the habits in her life might have been nonproductive, but were they immoral? Yeah. Were they immoral? And what I'm trying to suggest in the message is that a lot of a, a lot of times our anger at our mothers just just doesn't need to be there. There needs sure. to be reconciliation mm-hmm. because it does impact your entire family. Mm-hmm. It's, if you if your if your relationship with your mom is not good, mm-hmm. it will impact the, your relationship with your own kids. Yeah, I promise you, mm-hmm. because they're going to wonder why they can't be around grandparents. And mm-hmm. as they get older, they're going to ask that question more. Right. And when they find out, it's because you don't like them or can't get along with them, watch out. Yeah. Right. Watch out. So it, it's it's amazing what goes around comes around, I promise mm, you. I, right. I, I know another situation where you've got a family where the mother is, now this is one of those cases where it, 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 it's borderline, mm. in fact, immoral. So you've got a mother who's very possessive of the son mm, yeah. and, and doesn't want the son to be married because if the son mm. gets married, she knows that the He's daughter gone. is yeah. gone. So she, you know, now you've got some, now you've got something that's borderlining, that's, that's immoral. That's, yeah. that's okay. Now you're going to, it's not only destructive, but it's mm. immoral. You're going to absolutely devastate and ruin the life of your son. And that has been done. So what, what do you do as the son? Well, first of all, when you get older, you, when you grow up, you realize what's going on. You, <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you fall in love, you get married. Yeah. But do you go back and forgive your mother? Of course. Mm. You go back and forgive your mother. Because yeah. you got to ask the question, why was she like that? And it has a lot mm-hmm. to probably do with insecurities right. that she had in her own either marriage or family. It just keeps getting passed down. Somewhere along the line, somebody's got to decide, I'm going to break the cycle. Yeah. And to break the cycle means confrontation. Mm. you got to go to your mother and say, Mom, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about this until we solve it. Yeah. 
you did this, you, you know, I feel that this is what happened and that, that hurt me, well, mm-hmm. you know, and if the mother's defensive, you say, well, we're not getting anywhere now, let's try it again in a, in a, in a month yeah. or so. And then you bring in counselors, but you've got to deal, you've got to confront. If You can't, you can forgive and wish each other well without restoration, but if you want restoration and the relationship to return, you can't do that without confrontation mm-hmm. and healing. And, you can't, and, con- and it's conversation. Right, right. So what I'm trying to do in this Mother's Day message is help people to realize that all mothers make mistakes. My mother made a huge mistake mistakes with my younger brother, Tony. Right. Huge. And it impacted him all of his life. Mm -hmm. He chose to play the role of victim and it destroyed two marriages. Yeah. Well. And his relationship with his kids. Yeah. It's good, but not great. Right, right. But when he finally decided to stop playing that role and forgive her Mm -hmm. and to realize there was baggage brought in, his life changed. Yeah. Relationships changed. Whole, I mean, everything, his joy, his peace, his relationship with Jesus, everything changed. Mm-hmm. When there's bitterness between you and your mom and dad, it you may not think it's going to I- impact you, but it will. Right, right, right. Now, the thing we didn't talk about that we will talk about in the forgiveness series is that what happens when you have a mom or dad that were just, I mean, they were immoral, mm-hmm. both on drugs, both never home. Uh, you know, I talked about my friend whose mother came to him, would come to him at 12 years old. And say, I'm going to Hawaii for a week. I'll see you in a week when I get back at 12 years old. Now, you could do that back in the 60s and 70s and probably not be arrested. You do that today, yeah, you'd probably yeah. get arrested. But yeah. the point is, what do you do? Uh-huh. What do you do? So <clears throat> there are some parents who were horrible. Yeah. And I still think you have to forgive them, although you have to. that doesn't mean that you have to put yourself back in a relationship of hurt. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. let's say you've got a mother or father that, were, that did things that are quite immoral. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and when you talk to them about it, they're defensive and they want no admission. Then you've got to say, "Okay, I wish you well, but I can't. I can't mm-hmm. subject myself or my children mm-hmm. to these attitudes. So I'm sorry, but we're not going to be around each other." Yeah, yeah. that's painful, right? And it's not. It's not um, a good option. Yeah. But like I said before, there's a leaving and cleaving, it, and you're responsible to protect your wife and your children from right. from relationships that are harmful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, the, the the reason I used to hesitate to say that is because we're living in a culture today where you will you will classify things as immoral that are not immoral. True. Okay. Yeah. You 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 will. It's kind of like the whole thing. I'm going to shame you because you did this. So okay, mm-hmm. your mom didn't tell you that she loved you as much. Mm. Okay, or your mom was, or your dad was hard on you in athletics, or uh, they demanded you go to school and study and make straight A's. You know, yeah. this is, these are not immoral things. They may not, they may be destructive in in the parent child relationship, but they're not immoral. Right. You got to take a very good look mm. and ask. Okay, my mother was dysfunctional. Yeah, she was rude to my father. Say, uh, she was controlling, but. Was she immoral? You know, it's a, you, you got to really, yeah, like really think really, about that. You got to really think about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a lot of good stuff. And without going too much into the forgiveness, because obviously we're going to talk about more of that, um, I feel like it's super important to understand you can forgive your mom for whatever it was. Uh, um, you can forgive them, uh, you can forgive her, but that doesn't mean, like forgiveness and trust are two very different things. Yes, they are. But forgiveness leads back to trust. In time. In time, exactly. Yeah. And so would you talk about like, if for those, probably many of us, right, that would probably take, the the sad part is, is that in, in I feel like in our time now, uh, children or, or, or young adults are taking the victim mindset. Absolutely. Like, to the fullest, you yeah, know what I mean. Absolutely. I mean, we're seeing it on social media, yep. literally of, of of young adults talking about how terrible their parents were, yep. or making these subtle, you know, jokes or oh all this goodness. stuff. And we we think it's funny at some some yep. sense. Other sense, we're like, oh yeah, we're here for the for the parent, or we're here for the child. Like the mo- the mom was yep. in the wrong, and all this yep. stuff. Yep. Of course, we don't know any context, nope. and the context we're given. And the problem is, is you're doing it while you're young. Exactly. Because that's the problem with social media. If you if you didn't have social media, by the time you had children of your own, you'll find yourself becoming incredibly mm-hmm. gracious with your mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. But if you state all of those things before you've lived any life, oh, you can do irreparable damage. Yeah. Oh. You know, you, uh-huh. as a matter of fact, I, I always say you should never say anything about any member of your family on social media. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. 
Ever, it's your family, right? Even if even even if they are, keep it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's mm-hmm. no need to broadcast that. That's the worst thing about. It. And then you'll get everybody hopping on the bandwagon who feel like they they were ever offended. Now that that doesn't mean that there are not legitimate cases where the mm-hmm. parents are horrible. I right. got it. Yeah, but. Quite frankly, give yourself some time mm-hmm. and a little bit of life to, mm-hmm. to measure that before you start jumping the gun. Yeah, uh, and the, you know, it, and where the trust comes in, you know, it's it's like let's say let's say you've got a husband and a wife, and mm-hmm. let's say the let's say one cheats on the other. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can forgive, but right. man, you violated the marriage bed. Yeah. You've done something that is, you violated something that is so sacred that even Jesus himself gives you a way out, yeah. which is still remarkable to me. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, that that's the teaching of Scripture. So, yes, I can forgive you, but you're not coming back into my marriage bed until I can trust you. Mm. So, it might mean that I got to go get counseling and prove myself Yeah, over a period. It might take years, man. It probably will. Yeah. Okay, now you've gotten help. You've you've repented. Now I can trust. But I'm going to tell you, some <laughs> sometimes you can't. You never get it yeah. back. Mm-hmm. But you're right. You can forgive, and you can wish your the wife who cheats. Let's say the wife cheats on you. You can wish your wife well yeah. without reconciliation, without bringing her back into the marriage. Right, right, you right. can. Yeah. And I believe the same thing is true with motherhood. Mm-hmm. There are some mothers that are so aggressive and so so uh, offensive and so mm-hmm. damaging yeah. that you it's not wise to bring your children and your husband or your wife around. Yeah, right, right. right. However, that doesn't mean you can't go around. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. Yeah, right, right. That's the thing. <laughs> if, if you go to your mother and you continue to try to work on reconciliation, you're a big yeah. boy, you're a big girl, you can do that one-on-one with your mother Yeah, yeah. yeah. and work at it because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the, the, the benefits are, are huge right? and the costs are too great. Yeah. The benefits are grandparents, reconciliation, love, mercy in your own life. Right. The, 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 the costs are, oh man, your children are going to be asking questions. You yeah. also risk when they get older, them wanting to connect back with grandparents, right. even though you don't want them to mm-hmm. and they may do that right uh and then you've got some explaining to do it's, <laughs> it's just too hard to yeah work for reconciliation like paul said do everything you can to live at peace with everyone mm-hmm. but if there's a time if there if a time comes where it's just too detrimental to the family yeah. you, you you have to protect your wife and children first but i would always encourage you personally individually to try to make peace with your mother and your father. Right. And of right, course, right. people have tried to do that and then they they their mother and father aren't interested. Well, that's mm-hmm. when you shake the dust and, and you move and on you with move your on. life you have to, but it's not preferable. Right, right, exactly. Um yeah, I feel like particularly with like if you have a poor relationship with your mom, whether whatever is happening, that seems a little more tougher than if you had like a terrible relationship with your father. True. Yeah, and so I, yeah, I wanted to ask about that because the mother is the uh, she's the glue that holds everything together. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my mo- l- 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 this I love the conversations because it gives me time to talk about things I can't talk about yeah, usually. Yeah. So my mother's father, I explain, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but my mother's mother, oh, my mother's mother uh, wanted acceptance so badly mm. by her siblings. Oh. Okay, so you might say she's the runt of the litter. Uh-huh. She was treated like that. Yeah. When she got married, it was more important to her to have the acceptance of her siblings than the acceptance of her own daughters. Mm. So when she was put in situations to have to choose between the two, she went with her brothers and sisters, oh. which significantly wounded. Now, again, my mother and her sister realized that as they got older. I yeah. think one of the reasons they were able to forgive and move on was because they recognized the situation that their mother came out of and why yeah why she she just didn't know what to do she 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 longed for love and she wasn't getting it from her husband mm. the only ones left her siblings her her immediate family so we're all we all come into the marriage relationship with all kinds of baggage right and the only way to get through life together is to recognize we're all flawed and to, yeah. to give each other the benefit of the doubt yeah. you know i've learned to do that even in ministry to where as you get older, when somebody does something that really offends me or makes me angry, I'll, I always try to stop and think, okay, what's going on? With, did they, are they having a bad day? Mm. Did somebody, are they hurt? Are they yeah. wounded? Why are they lashing out and responding this way? Yeah. And that's always a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, because if you, 
if you can put yourself in those shoes, their shoes, just for a moment, it will it will lighten the load. Mm-hmm. Right. And I do think you know I, we 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 all have things we're good at and things we're not so good at. <laughs> I don't talk about the things I'm not so good at very yeah. often. I don't. <laughs> I know that. But one of the things God has given me the ability to do is to forgive. Mm. And so any I I I all I'm I'm one of those guys that I think restoration should always be possible no matter what happened. Yeah. Okay, now now taking for granted that nothing's ever happened to my kids. Yeah. You know, I was watching Dateline, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let's say somebody did something to my daughter. I don't mm-hmm. I can't honestly tell you how I would respond. Right. Uh I know I would want justice, but the question is, can I offer forgiveness as well? Yeah. Well, when it comes to relationships, and, and this fits your mom, your dad, your siblings, mm-hmm. everybody, I've always had this ability that if no matter what happens, if somebody, if I reach out to you and you say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, or or if if you reach out to me and say, hey, I'd really like to restore this, I, I, I've always had the ability, okay. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's personality type. Maybe mm-hmm. I like to be, maybe I'm a people please. Maybe I want everybody to be happy. Maybe peacemaker. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I do realize that not every temperament, not every attitude is like that. Some people, man, when they get offended, they, they, it's bitterness. Yeah, and it is yeah. that bitterness, it just grows and grows. And mm-hmm. they don't really want reconciliation. They want revenge. Now, if they get revenge, they feel better. Or right. at least they think they'll feel better for a while. Yeah. But how same. many times have you watched kind of, murder cases or whatever <laughs> and the family shows up and then the guy who murdered their kids are he's convicted he's going to life for prison how many of them walk out saying it's not what i thought it would be mm. well no because it didn't nothing's really okay you thought by punishment and vengeance that everything would be fine but it won't right. because it doesn't undo the deed right you see you're only that's the deed will never be undone but until you forgive Mm-hmm. The deed that's been done, the bitterness will grow. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the same thing with your mom. Yeah. So, so it, it, if all you can do is to look at your mother and say, okay, she was flawed, even immoral, and I'm angry about that. But you know what? I don't know what happened before. I don't know mm-hmm. what led to all this. I'm going to release her. Yeah. I'm going to wish her well. I hope her life goes well. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be around me or my kids because I don't. There's no trust. But right, I'm going right. to release. And then if you're serious, if if in your mind you can really say that, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, the bitterness will stop. Right. And you'll the healing will come. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I feel like there's a sense of um, there's a sense obviously of care, right? That you're yeah. you're you're not looking at yourself anymore. You're looking at the other person. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm thinking of like movies where uh, if, if it's like a dramatic movie or a, a drama and it's dealing with parents or something and somehow it's a movie, right? So like either the character will somehow go back in time yeah. and see the, their yeah. parent as a child. Oh. And then of course, how, how those moments that like, that's the crux of the whole film of yeah. like, Forgive your parent because look at what yeah. she yeah. went through. Or you what, don't know what at, happened. That's right. And what. we love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But we won't we do it, it but we love it. <laughs> exactly. We eat it up. We're crying at the end of the movie. and yeah. But then do we think about calling our no, mom? No. no. <laughs> it's just like vengeance too. You know, when we have a movie, they always paint the the uh, antagonist. Oh, he's, he or she's horrible. Right. So when they die at the end, yeah. But, yeah, but correct. there's a part of us that knows this, this isn't real. You're right. This, right, right. this person didn't really die. Yeah. <laughs> the thought of it, yeah. <laughs> but when you bring skin, when you bring, if it was a real person in real yeah. life, the death would be, it, it, it would not be something that we rejoice. Right, right, right. And if we did, in, in, in the case of somebody on death row for heinous crimes, mm-hmm. It still doesn't bring closure. Right, Never has. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Only it, forgiveness brings closure. Yeah, and the person who, the the person who has that significant other, either fall away because of something or or die, you know, because of that, they'll always. I feel like their their response is is like, yeah. Again, it didn't do it. It didn't fulfill the void that I have of losing this person. Yeah. And because of that, now they have to figure out forgiveness because. Yeah. Clearly, they're they're latching on still, yeah. and I think that's important for um, those of us who have been hurt by our moms or have had just like a hard relationship that we we do latch on to the things that they did, and and we're so you know we we grip it tight. Um, yeah. and I think the story of of your brother is is so significant <sighs> of the realization of of when your mom died that he's like. I should have done this a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, he was. I mean, when I found him rolled up in the corner, yeah, in a fetal position, man, mm. like I, and just weeping, yeah, and yeah. then to say my mommy's dead, yeah, and I knew what was going on, mm. and I tried to walk him through it, but yeah, yeah, boy, for years after yeah. that. Now, 
he was able to, for some reason, he was able to forgive. Yeah. And I, I, I'm still sure not to this day why it took her death to do that. Mm -hmm. But I always find it interesting that all four of my mother's prayers were answered not in life but in death, and it mm -hmm. took her death to to bring them to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is an amazing thing. Yeah, and I, I, I know that his life could have been a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It impacted everything, and yeah. she was to blame, yeah. no doubt. Mm -hmm. But she came to that conclusion, begged him for forgiveness, and he. Just wouldn't give it to her. Right, right. So that's that's when it's really hard when your mother acknowledges mm -hmm. and she says, oh, I messed up. I'm so yeah. sorry. Please yeah. forgive me. I realized what I had done. Mm -hmm. And you don't forgive her. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, and that's significant because I feel like you seeing him cry like that and him yeah. say that yeah. was literally the moment of the first time was. he was ever hurt as a it child. Was. It was. So you, you're literally seeing him as a child. Oh yeah, absolutely. Re filled In with the fetal that, position. Uh huh. Filled with that regret and how instantly we are. I think. I think maybe that's what it is. Is that. Uh, you know, like uh, us as kids, we'll do something to our siblings, or we'll do something that we we know gives us like the power or something but then when we when when there's ramifications for it we're we're quick to i mean we we melt right i'm so sorry like oh, that yeah. and we just feel that weight oh, of yeah. it oh no doubt and and i think that's you come to that moment where you're yeah. just like oh what did what did i just do yeah but the good thing is that one we have christ who who can give us that assurance, you know what I mean? And to hear those prayers from your mom. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting, Drew, is out of the four boys, mm. I would have to agree that my brother, Tony, has the deepest, most intimate mm. relationship with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, yeah. how does that happen? The yeah. one who struggles to, somehow over the course of all that pain, mm -hmm. he found Jesus. Right. right the right. real one. Yeah, yeah. And then now he's just so fun to be around. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just yeah. fun to talk to, yeah. fun to be around. You know, used to he would go up and down. Now he's mostly yeah, yeah, yeah. even kill. Right, right. Uh, he's got some health issues as mm -hmm. a result of his some of his addictions. Yeah, but he's dealing with them, and he doesn't blame God for them. Right, what, right. what God didn't do this to me? <laughs> you know, he, yeah. he's just got a good head on his shoulders. Super smart yeah. too. So it's fun to talk to. Yeah, and that's awesome. Uh, yeah, isn't that it, where 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 the other two brothers who haven't had a lot of problems in life? Uh -huh. I would say. Just belong to very legalistic. Well, one at least belongs to very legalistic type mm -hmm. thing, and there's mm -hmm. really no, the emotion yeah. just isn't there. The the hmm. you wonder, man, do you know? Do you really know? There's no grace in his life. Right? Do you right. know mm -hmm. Jesus? Do you really know who this guy is? Yeah. I mean, he's one of those yeah. guys. Where only people who believe like I do can go to heaven. Right. right. And only people who do what you know. Yeah. So where is the relationship part of you Correct. that would not yeah. have grace and mercy? I mean, yeah. in his mind, a Baptist is a sinner going to hell. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, how does God, so you got to start yeah, there yeah, and, yeah. and so break I, that down. I'm not yeah. sure how. I'm not sure how families are dysfunctional. I mean, <laughs> yeah, isn't that the bottom yeah, line? Yeah. Every family has a know-it-all. Yeah. Every family has the favorite. Uh -huh. Every family has the black sheep. Every I mean, come on. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's, no matter the size of the family, there's right. always yeah. yeah. And sometimes um, you got one more than one role. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's so true, and yeah. it's it, it, it's it, life is about going through this dysfunction. Yeah. and finding what, everything you need in Christ. Yeah, so that you can extend mercy and grace to mm -hmm. your siblings, your mother and father, the way yeah. Christ has established it to you. Yeah. By the way, that's the foundation of all of this, isn't it? Right. Yeah, the foundation. Yeah, yeah. It's not just, yeah, we forgive because we get rid of the bitterness. Yeah. yeah. But the foundation of all of this is while we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. if, if Christ only relates to us, if we aren't flawed, yeah. it's, it's impossible. Right. Remember, He loves us so that He can make us beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I do think there's something about a daughter for, or a son forgiving a mother and and if, if it's possible, yeah. restoring the relationship that actually makes the mother beautiful. Right. That actually would help the mother to see, to grow and to see. And yeah. the, wow, these are no greater testimony to your mother than what Christ can do than forgiveness. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. There's, a, there's a lot there. I, I want to um, touch on uh, the youngest brother because um, I feel like for him, it was, I've tried, I've tried everything. And yet I keep going down to the darkest pit. Yeah. And and that's where I met Christ. Yeah. You know, and it, and no it, beca doubt. it became the the death of your mom. Yeah. To to understand like there there literally is nothing that can help me here. Yeah. And yet Christ goes, Hey, how's it going? I'm Jesus. Yeah. You know, and meeting meeting him there at that moment. Oh, that's good. And 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 in that place. 
I think, I think that really transforms a person to fully understand that Jesus is not just what you read in the text, but that he's actually the person that's living and meeting you in the darkest place. Um, which is an answered prayer Ooh. to your mom. Yeah. Which I which goes back to like prayerful moms yeah. are the most strongest <sighs> prayers in the world. Yeah. <laughs> um I like, make them forgive a life. multitude of sins. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. We're gonna get that in parenting too. Mm-hmm. No parents gonna you're not gonna be perfect. You think you are, but you're gonna make so many mistakes that you could write <laughs> you could write a volume, you know. But yeah. if you point them to Jesus and you pray for them, right. It's 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 pretty close to a cure all. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think because my mom did that, she prayed uh, for all of us. Yeah, went to church, mm. loved Jesus, and we saw that she loved Jesus. Yeah, and that yeah. melted all. Of, see, that's the thing. All four boys. You think we'd at least realize she gave us the most important gift, yeah. Jesus, because uh, that's what sustains us all now. Right. Without Jesus, we'd all be lost. Uh-huh. She gave us the the best thing she gave us was Jesus. Right, right. So if your mother gave that to you, man, give her a little credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could give her a hug and yeah. tell her how much you love her. You, yeah, you, for you all gave of that. me Jesus. You were never like him, but you gave him to me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna love you. You know, you little biscuit. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's so important how, uh, just like motherhood in general, is so reflective of God's character. Yeah. Um, and and obviously that's the, you know, between the parents. That's where we get the best character of God yeah. um, shown shown to us. As long as the parents are also seeking um, after after God as yeah. well. Um, yeah. I want to end it with yeah. going just a different direction. Just on the topic of motherhood, um, culturally, I feel like the secular view or just just the world in general general is trying to kill motherhood. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, absolutely with, absolutely. Uh, I mean, heavy topics like abortion, yep. like the yep. need for it, mm-hmm. um, the empowerment of women, yep. Yep. that, that yep. motherhood is not significant, that being, being a business woman, making as much money as you can, um, exposing like yourself, yep. uh, you know, using your body as, as a means to make money, like motherhood is so stripped away now. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. There's a lot of reasons for that. But I remember a few years ago, and this is going back now. So it's been around a while. This is going back probably late 90s. I made the statement in a sermon that um, how proud I was of a mother who had decided that she was not going to work, but she was going to stay home hmm. to raise her kids. Uh, and they were, it was going to be a bit of a financial struggle, yeah. but she valued that over and above mm-hmm. making more money and having an easier life. Yeah. And man, I got raked over of the course. course. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember asking the question to somebody mm-hmm. who posed it because it was, uh, it, it, long story short, it had made it to the local newspaper and our church was, was pretty well known. Yeah. So I got grilled. <laughs> And I said, let me ask you something. Why does that bother you? This was the reporter. Why does that bother you? Well, because you're making it sound like it's the woman, the one that should stay home, not the guy. I said, well, first of all, I do believe that, that a a father is not a mother. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's a mothering that happens. So I do believe that. But it's not that I believe a mother can't go out and make a career for herself. Of course, if she wants to do that, go do it. I just told you an example of a woman who decided that this was better than the other Mm -hmm. and that she would delay it for a season. So what, what's... What are you upset about? And he said, well, I just, I, I think it's, I said, no, let me, I'm going to tell you. And I was, I was younger, so it was more aggressive. Let me tell you what you're upset about. You value a career over motherhood. Mm-hmm. And that's something your culture's taught you. But but God values motherhood over a career. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God values, you, are you telling me a, mother, a, a woman who decides to stay home is less important and less significant than a woman who goes to work in mm. a career? I'm telling you neither one's wrong, but you're telling me one is less than the other. Mm. I'm telling you that in God's economy, there's no higher achievement mm-hmm. than motherhood. Yeah. No higher calling than motherhood. Mm. And it, it stopped him. Yeah, I said. See, it's just a, it's a different worldview. Right. Correct. Yeah. 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 And and uh, that that's what's happened. Mm-hmm. So we've made mothers feel like they're less than and not mm-hmm. a significant contributor to society if they're not out making money and changing the world through a career. Mm-hmm. And what the what God would say to you is the way you most influence culture 
is through the raising of your children yeah and imparting your faith into them yeah right and th- and so that's one thing then then i think i i mean i'm not a conspiracy theorist and, <laughs> but at the same time i know that there's the educated elite and the wealthy who are all about population control yeah and they're terrified of uh, global warming and and, com- and uh, population control. Mm-hmm. So right now, I think you see a lot of things happening that have to do not with, in their minds, righteous or unrighteous, but practicality. Yeah. So think about it. Abortion is a great way to, to govern population. Mm-hmm. Right. Rather than righteousness, rather than refraining from having sex until marriage, mm-hmm. they their idea is they're not going to do that. Correct. The Christians may, but even they don't do it. And they're mm-hmm. right. Yeah, right? You're right. So you're saying yeah. so the best way to do this is just abortion on demand. Right. That way we'll we'll kill the lives of potential right. uh well for children who are being born into our world yeah. all over the world. So let's make it available as we can. That's yeah. that's one of the things that's happening. Mm. And and the way to do and the, by the way, the other way to do that, the other way to do that is promote homosexuality and lesbianism. Mm. And that's yeah. going to tick some people off. Of course, of course. Because, yeah. because the, and if you can get young men and to, to trans, if you transition, mm-hmm. then you become what? You're not going to have children. Right, right. Okay, right. so if I'm a, if I'm a woman and I remove all my woman parts mm-hmm. and become, I'm not going to have children. If mm-hmm. I'm a man and I'm, I'm still not going to have children. Yeah. So the bottom line is it's another way of population control. It's another yeah. way to, to minimize the population. Now, does everybody who believes that pass? No, no, of course not. Don't, don't take that to the extreme. Right. I'm simply saying you're seeing more and more policies that try to, uh, remove the distinction between men and women, whatever mm-hmm. we can do to remove the distinction. And if that mm-hmm. distinction means sterilization to where we're not going to have explosion in population, uh, i.e. global warming issues, then fine, great. These are great. These are going to be great public policies. Yeah, yeah. And you know, George Orwell, 1984, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. he said this was coming. Yeah, exactly. So why am I the bad guy? <laughs> right, why, why didn't right. you crucify him in 1984 when he said this is what's going to happen? <laughs> right, uh, exactly. And it's where we are because we're so terrified of oh, that. Oh, 100%. And, uh, and that, that goes back to really, it goes back to what we talked about a few weeks ago, and I won't, be, I won't belabor this too much, but mm. I just don't get it. Where are the women standing up for women in yeah. sports? Yeah. Um, because I, I do think women deserve equal rights. Yeah. Absolutely. And I do believe they've been pushed down far too long. Mm. But Okay. Help me here. Right. You know, you've got these young girls worked all their lives in sports. All of a sudden, some guy comes over with the testosterone. We, we know we know the muscle and all of those things. Yeah. And he comes over, he starts winning events. Mm-hmm. And I saw the story last week of where a guy won two track meets, and his times would have been dead last among the men. <laughs> but he beat all the girls. Right. So where are the women for yeah. women's rights saying, hey, no, stop this. Right. Stop this. Mm-hmm. Women's for women's sports, men and men's sports. Now, for me, if you want to have a complete third category of transgender, I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no there's no uh, a disadvantage or advantage. Right. So right, if you right. want to have a transgender category of sports, if you want to have your Olympics, everything fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got no problem. Right. But to have a male running against yeah. women is unfair. Right. If I had a daughter that I had trained all my life as a runner, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden she gets the senior year of high school, like like happened to the girl in Kentucky, yeah. uh-huh. and she's going to she's running for scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all. I, I don't get They it. would be all gone. Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. Swimming, running, whatever yeah, it is. Exactly. I, don't, I don't. Anyway, so you're right. Uh, motherhood is under attack. Yeah. But so is wom- so is womanhood. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, we we've got to do a good job in our mm-hmm. churches of encouraging right. young women that motherhood is the most valuable yeah. thing in God's economy. Right. Because right. you're raising the next generation of yeah. believers. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can't go out and be a career girl as well. Right. Yeah, you got to right. go out. If God called you to be a, you know, a doctor, lawyer, a, a politician, heaven yeah, forbid, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. it is God's called <laughs> you to do, but make sure your first and foremost responsibility is with your children. Mm-hmm. And right. until we start telling moms that, you know, and, and the same is true as fathers. You're right. They, 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 your, your first and foremost responsibility is your wife and your kids. Same, mm-hmm. same thing is true Correct. there. It's just... Be careful of thinking that manhood mm-hmm. and womanhood are not important issues, right, and that fatherhood right. and leading your family spiritually and motherhood of nurturing your children. Be careful of thinking they're not important because that's the first step toward the destruction of society. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. It always has been. And I feel like that's the the interwoven secret towards uh, 
disdain towards motherhood and trying to keep it under wraps, even with womanhood, is is planting that little seed that is saying like, there, motherhood is insignificant, womanhood is insignificant because so that way they can do um, whatever they want here in the secular worldview. And so that's why I I feel like just coming off of what you're saying, like it's so important to teach the biblical understanding of what motherhood and Absolutely. womanhood is Absolutely. and how how important it is. I mean, mm. everything that I do, I always, I will always say, I learned this from my father. And then the meaning behind it is, well, because I learned this from my mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's so it also, important. It, you're making me regret that I didn't tackle this on Mother's Day rather than the other. <laughs> Hmm, maybe next Mother's Day. Could you remind me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll be there sure does to need it. to be something about this. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, before we go, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anytime we open up this can or <laughs> door, I've got to, I've got to have a, uh, a little prefacing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you're there and you're struggling with same sex attraction mm. and you're struggling with uh, gender dysphoria. Uh, my words no way uh, are meant to say to you that these feelings aren't real. I believe mm-hmm. they are real, mm-hmm. very real. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that your best life is to uh, live your life out as God has created you. He created the male and female. You're one or the other. Mm-hmm. Live out your life. Be patient. Ask God to guide and direct you, but be patient and follow the life that God has given you. Mm-hmm. If you're having same-sex attraction, I'm also uh, I'm assuming those feelings are real. I'm not saying that you're kidding yourself or it's a dream mm-hmm. world. These feelings are real. I just want to remind you that I have feelings also that are real that are still ungodly. Mm. You have to take the feelings and emotions that you have, and you have to bring them under the subjection of the Word of God. Mm. And if you will do that, I'm telling you, your best life is lived that way. Don't sacrifice your future for the pleasure of what is the present. And so I believe those are real. You are loved. Christ yeah. loves you. The church yeah. loves you. You are welcome mm-hmm. in this place. Yeah. But recognize we're still going to point you toward right. the biblical idea of creation of male mm-hmm. and female and of husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And we're never going to stop doing that because yeah. we because we love you. Not no, yeah. we don't do it because we hate you. Right. We know that that's where God has determined your best life will be lived. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. That's good. That's good. God bless you. Nice yeah. haircut. <laughs>